on here? This game's technically from the future. Should be working flawlessly. <laughs> you are using an Imperial Nintendo Entertainment System. The game you are trying to play, Star Wars, has been restricted by the Empire for containing facts. Instead, try one of our compatible and approved games, such as Alderaan was an inside job. I guess I'll just have to use one of my region unlock systems that plays everything in Gungan Basic. <laughs> what do you sabayan? This is not the same thing. This is bad. You can take my dignity, but you can't take my NES. Like I said, dignity is fine. Take it. I didn't really have much to begin with. The Nintendo Entertainment System is well known for being the place where you proved if you were worthy or not. It was the gauntlet for retro games. Sink or swim! And Star Wars was no exception. Let's see how the galaxy far, far away fared. Right off the bat, you get the awesome theme music. Although it seems a... Uh, a little more upbeat than usual. The cutscenes here look great for the NES and really serve the films well. Like, here's what I mean, see that? C-3PO's looking at you right in your eyes like you just caught him masturbating. In this first level here, you go around on your land speeder. I'm assuming this is Tatooine. And you explore various caves and environments. The game mostly takes place on foot with Luke holding his little blaster. But hey, I want my lightsaber! I don't really know that this music fits. It doesn't exactly scream Star Wars. You got your standard affair, you got your Tusken Raiders, your Jawas, your Cave Flies, your Brendan Fraser's The Mummy, but hold on, I mean, I don't, maybe I gotta brush up on my Star Wars lore, but I don't remember, was Brendan Fraser part of this? Who is this guy? What, what's he doing here? I, I, I think he might be in the wrong game. Huh? Who's this? Oh, it's your boy Obi-Wan. What you doing in a cave, bro? It's okay, though. I know you got good intentions. I can see it splayed out all over your lifeless cross-eyed gaze. Oh, boy. What a great crowd tonight. What a great audience. My God, there are so many monsters and scary things in these caves. How will I ever find my way? Oh, there's an exit sign right there. It would all be hopeless had it not been for this well-placed neon sign. Thanks, whoever put that there. It's kind of similar to Zelda 2 in the way that you enter the levels from a top-down angle, only to have those levels play out as a side-scroller. This is a style of game that we've seen fall heavily out of popularity since this era, most likely to do with the fact that it sucks and I hate it. There are a few cockpit dogfighting sections, though, like in the X-Wing and the Millennium Falcon. I don't remember it being so shaky in here. Eventually, you do get your lightsaber, which is pretty cool. And lucky for you, the laws of momentum need not apply. You just barrel through people at will. Oh my god, they put a top-down shooter segment in too? This game has ridiculous variety for the NES. I gotta say, it's so immersive, I'm literally getting drawn in. Bonjour, I am Art. And just like that, she's gone. Come on guys, look alive, you just saved the whole galaxy. A simple twitch or spasm will do. Also, Alea has a clubbed head. I don't know what's up with that. Somebody better tell her. While we're at it, let's take a look at the game's sequel, Empire Strikes Back for NES. Once again, right off the bat, awesome cutscenes and music here. The game has you start out on your Tauntaun, just like Luke's in the film. All right, I'm ready. Let's go. Han, you want to give me a second? I just got started here. All right, just get my bearings back, get situated, and oh my god, what? What do you want? What is it you have to tell me, Obi-Wan, that's so important? The lightsaber is the weapon of a Jedi. Oh, thank you. Fascinating. I'm glad you stopped me dead in my tracks to tell me that. Will you just let me play the damn game? Look, all I'm saying is... Oh, come on! It's a little hard to control, and goddamn, somehow the blaster got even faster this time. Look at this thing go. Whoa! My god! Heads down, everyone! Luke's packing that standard-issue pistol over here! Trust me, you don't want to see the heavy artillery! The game is mostly a platformer, but like last time, it's a hybrid sort of thing when you really get down to it, incorporating many styles of gameplay. Whoa, what? You can see the game designer credits if you go to this corner here. Luke, choose the Force. Choose the Force? 
I think you're getting that wrong somewhere, but uh, it's uh, still catchy, so I'll let it slide. You can also do this, whatever this is. Oh. Oh. Okay. I think something's definitely happening here. Oh, now that's just absolutely unnecessary. He did not have to die that real. Interesting tidbit. In this game, they brought back the Atari 2600 version of Empire Strikes Back entirely as its own level. You may recognize it by its better known name, Bird vs. Camel. Pretty crazy, right? What used to be sold as an entire game 10 years prior is now just one minor portion of a larger game. That's progress! And most importantly, though, you can shoot up the butt of the ATAT. -AT. Inbound to the rear, Captain! Time for a backup plan, sir. The enemy appears to be totally enjoying getting it up the butt. Oh, God, I, I'm hit! Oh, I think I'm going down! Ah! Okay, I think I may have sustained some serious damage, but what do you know? I think I might make it out all right. Oh. Oh, wow. That turned out a lot better than expected. I even got my own little lightsaber. <laughs> I'm invincible! I'm a god! I don't even need a snow speeder! I'm coming for you! Here I come! I'm gonna break the game! I don't care about their fucking rules! By the end, you finally get to battle face to face with Darth Vader, who sits there and endlessly fires a blaster at you, just like in the movies. And then, the mother load. Jumping up a generation, we have the Super Star Wars games. For me, there was absolutely nothing like booting one of these up. Colorful action-packed, and each and every one unique in their own way. This was as good as it gets. There's not much bad to say about these games, barring mentioning their brutal difficulty. It was one of those games where the enemies don't stop spawning out of nowhere, so it was easy to take hits when you didn't want to. Why does the blaster keep getting faster and faster with each installment? How are they even gonna keep that up? At the current rate of technological growth, we predict by the far-off year of 2002, the blasters will approximately be firing this fast. Oh my goodness, I fired directly into the gallery. Oh. Oh! oh! Now you may think that's where the old Nintendo Star Wars games end, but rumor has it, there exists another game in a far off and forbidden land to the east. And for this, we must look to eBay. Oh, here it is. Yes, in fact, there exists a Japanese version of Star Wars solely for the Japanese version of the NES, the Famicom. And it's completely different from the American version in every aspect, from the ground up. The game starts off with Luke looking at a transmission from Leia as shown by R2-D2. Standard stuff so far. Leia, I'm walking here, okay? <laughs> you go around whacking little owl dudes and other monsters that I don't really recall from Star Wars. In this rendition, of course, Luke Skywalker is played by uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Pretty much everything you slice with your saber just explodes instantly. In proper Japanese fashion, the stormtroopers are freaking adorable. Also, you better like the Star Wars theme if you're gonna play this. I mean, you better love it. Because this loop is all it plays. What? Well, it's a little early to see Darth Vader, isn't it? He doesn't usually spend his valuable time in the first level. Eh, whatever. If it's a fight you want, Vader, it's a fight you'll get. Excuse me, why? That's a scorpion. I've seen him. I've seen a few of them. Picked a few from the desert. That's a scorpion right there. Uh, I feel like at this point, asking questions is besides the point. Irrelevant, really. But, no, you know, I think I will have to inquire. Why did Darth Vader turn into a scorpion? I don't even know if this was originally supposed to be a Star Wars game. Why is there a level with Egyptian symbolism? You fight all sorts of crazy enemies that look like they fit more into Zelda than Star Wars. What the hell? This doesn't look like it should be anywhere near this series. It's like something from a Mario game. Yes, just as I planned it. Darth Vader is much weaker when submerged in water and cannot breathe. Why am I swimming and he's not? That's not fair. Oh, cool, this time he's a fish. What a trickster. 
I suppose the whole thing here is just going around saving your friends from various anamorphing Darth Vaders. Oh, good. The Millennium Falcon was here the whole time. No, that's good to know. Glad to know I didn't even need to swim all that way. The Millennium Falcon could have just taken me straight where I wanted to go, especially considering it can just fly right beside this magical floating body of water. You know what? No, this is great fun. You're always guessing. What kind of crazy creature are you going to turn into this time, Vader? Well, that time it was just actually him, I think. Poor guy, I just, I just wanted to slaughter an animal. Well, mission over, galaxy saved. Helpful whale, small head dog, Han Solo. How you doing, buddy? You look like you really worked to get there. You look happy, that's good for you. You know, there was a lesson in all this. And what that lesson was, I don't really know. But I tell you one thing's for sure. Be careful who you damage, for they may become a scary animal. Look what's going on now. Look what's happened to me. I'm a butterfly, Star Wars taught me about this. Look out, Vader, here I come. Thanks for watching. Starcade is back and here to stay. I'll be back soon with another episode, so stay put.